Hey there everyone, today we are going to be talking about how to manage your budgets and how to essentially make the most of the money you have. Today we are going to be taking over the Mariners and there are a few reasons for this. First of all, they are a small market team. We have the 23rd largest budget, so we're towards the bottom of the league in terms of the amount of money that we're going to have available to us. Uh, we're not selling tickets at a very high price as you can tell. And ultimately, we've got some expensive players under contract who aren't necessarily all that great. So we're going to talk about how to handle them. We've also got some players like Marco Gonzalez and uh, Evan White who are under interesting longer term deals. And some top prospects like uh, Taylor Trammell and, of course, Julio Rodriguez, Jared Kelnick. So we're going to talk about all of those types of players today, uh, how you should handle who you pay essentially and where you're putting your money into. So the first thing you're doing when you start up a game is you want to assess the players on your team. Who's making money? Okay, we got Kyle Seeger here, our third baseman. He's not horrible, but he's probably not worth the money he's making. You say Kikuchi, he's basically a very replacement level starting pitcher, definitely not worth the money he's making. James Paxton, he's not bad, but is he really worth eight and a half million dollars? Mitch Haniger. Okay, he's not bad, but again, is he really worth $3 million when we could probably pick up somebody who's essentially the same talent at a cheaper price? Rafael Montero, probably worth $2.2 million to be a decent reliever. J.P. Crawford, probably worth $2 million to be a good shortstop. And on down the list, as you look at every player, uh, especially long-term contracts, guys like Ken Giles, you'll really want to look at, Chris Flexen, definitely guys like Evan White under contract for really long periods of time. So once you've looked at your players, the next thing you want to do is check out what your scouting and player development type budgets are at, uh, just to get an idea of how much spare money you may have available to you. So the first thing I'm seeing here is that we got $10.4 million in our scouting budget, and we're playing a small market team. We have a highly favored tool scout. That means we really don't need that much money in our scouting budget in order to have an accurate read on our players. So I'm going to literally just chop that down to the minimum. Now I got 6.6 .6 million more to work with. That's a pretty significant deal. That's a good player's salary right there. The next thing we're going to do, completely disable the draft budget, as I always do. Now, uh, some people argue that the international amateur free agent budget should be zero, and I think that's perfectly fine as well. You could totally set this to be zero dollars. I'm going to set it to be five million. Uh, just so I know that I have that money set aside for a top player. And our uh, player development budget, obviously, this is going to be six or $36 million uh, by the time we're done working here. Now, it's your choice. If you feel like you want to acquire more expensive players and then trade them away, in other words, you want financial flexibility at the start of your franchise, you can set this to the minimum as well. And actually, you could just disable this as well. Now we got $37 million to work with. Now, obviously, we need to find $40 million by the time we're done so that we can put the $5 million into the international amateur budget and the $36 million into the player development budget. But we don't need that money now. So this means that we can trade for more expensive players and then shop them away again to other teams or trade for more money later on to be able to afford them. Uh and essentially, I would only recommend doing this if you're very confident that you're going to be able to make that money back. So since we're not really going to be doing too much with our franchise here, I'm just going to set the player development budget to $36 million and the international amateur budget to $5 million, uh, just so we have that money set aside right now and we can look at other things. So we have very little money to work with here, essentially. Uh, we're not turning the scouting budget back up because we can't afford to with the franchise that we've got. But now we need to start determining where we're going to be figuring out situate how are we cutting money exactly uh, is approximate is about what we're doing right now so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the most eh, most expensive player on our roster that i don't think we absolutely need to have and that's kyle seager he's making 18 million dollars 15 million option for next season and he just doesn't look very talented to me he's good at third base he's not a bad hitter but overall i just don't see him being worth I don't see him being worth $18 million. Also, I just noticed his nickname is Corey's brother, which I find hilarious. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is just shop him around. Regulars, prospects, veterans, whatever. Just give me somebody who is going to not be expensive for Kyle Seager. If we can get a good player, awesome. But that's not our priority here. We're just looking to get rid of Kyle Seager. So uh, we're getting some offers here, of course, which is good news. If you see the names coming up, that's good. 
and I'm just going to take the first good player I see here, Gavin Sheets. Now, we could probably get better in this. I saw some players that I like uh, better, but he's the first guy who comes up who's cheap. So we're just going to acquire a nice young prospect, uh, which is obviously your first preference for an expensive player. We're dumping salary. We're, playing, we're acquiring somebody who can be productive in that guy's place. And uh, now we got more money to work with. So the next thing I'm going to do, can we also dump Kikuchi? I'm going to spoil the answer for you guys. It's no, but we might find somebody who's willing to give us a different contract in return. And that's really what we're looking at here with Kikuchi. Okay, so we, the Angels are offering us Justin Upton. Now, he's making $23 million this year and $28 million next year. Kikuchi, on the other hand, is only making $15 million this year and $13 million next year. So this is essentially adding on an extra... 10 15 million dollars total but if we can get this partly retained that might make it worth taking on upton's salary so we're gonna uh drop the retention here they're only willing to take five percent that's not worth it at this point uh we're losing money this year even more money next year so we're just gonna have to eat kikuchi's salary with not really too much we can do and i just think what uh we're gonna want to do here is take a look at our long-term contract now evan white he's not that bad of a hitter he's league average and he's not great at first base i mean obviously that's not his ideal position if we move to the outfield he's going to be more valuable overall but the real question is is he are we going to be entrapped with a player who's just not that good on an expensive contract well not really because his contracts are not actually that much especially the first three years where he's hardly making anything so what we're going to do here with players like evan white is you're just going to play him for like one or two years, see how he does, see if he's valuable, and then you trade him away in year three while he's still cheap. If he's not, or if he turns into a type of player that you're going to be happy to have on this type of contract, that you're not moving around because you have better options, then it's perfectly fine to keep him and just write out a majority of the contract with him. Uh, another thing you're going to want to consider... Who are your top players? Who are you going to want to be giving money to? And as an example here, we're just going to use Taylor Trammell. I'm not saying he is a top player, but we're going to get uh, just talk about him here. So Taylor Trammell, we're saying he's got good left field defense, a pretty good OPS type bat. So let's say we want to offer him a long-term extension, not super long-term, but just something to keep him around the franchise for a while. So let's say we're interested in eight years. Now, the first thing you want to do is keep in mind that you don't need to pay this guy too much. Uh, it's also going to depend what you decide to do on how much money you've got in the next year. So we've got $20 million available next year. And let's just say Trammell is really the only guy we're looking to extend. So we can front load his contract, which I know is an unpopular thing to do. But I just, I like to pay players less uh, later on the road when I'm going to need that money for other things. So we're just going to drop this contract off really heavily. Uh, this is just an example of how you can frame the contract. I do not want to pay uh, players who are not top-tier players very much. So I'm interested in extending Trammell, but I don't want to pay him the $10, $15 million a year that I'm willing to give to generational-type talents. Now, this deal... It's about four and a half million average annual value. He's literally making next to nothing towards the end of the contract. I'm also going to guarantee him a role of the starting lineup because realistically, if he's not in the lineup, we're going to trade him. We don't want to pay him even two and a half million dollars to be a backup unless he's a really good backup. But regardless, he's probably going to be worth more on the trade market at that point. And we just don't, there's no reason to uh, have him be making a good amount of money if he's not in our starting lineup so this type of contract is going to work with some players i'm guessing this value is not going to be quite high enough for Tramel, but we'll see uh it's not even evenly structured okay so that tells me it's certainly not going to be high enough uh i'll decline or i'll have the salary decline a little bit more slowly and make sure you are looking at the average annual value before you offer a player a contract because sometimes it will surprise you. Oh, I'm offering this guy more than I thought. I guess I can drop the value on this offer. Or, oh, I don't think this is going to be enough money to convince him. I'd better increase the value. So now we're offering him $5 million over eight years. We're cutting out, I believe, two years of pre-arbitration and three years of arbitration. That's another thing. Uh, definitely make sure you're checking how much control you have left on a player before you offer them a contract. And that wasn't quite good enough for him. 
and this is another important thing, make sure you are always offering under what a player wants for a contract rather than over what a player wants. You can always give them more money in an offer, but you can't take away extra money that you give them. So for example, if I'd offered Tramel like $20 million a year and he wants it, he takes it, that's the money he's getting. But if he was able to say sign for $10 million a year, I'm not saying these are his actual numbers, of course, but just as an example, uh, then I've just wasted that $10 million a year that I didn't need to spend on Tramel. All right, and now we are at a little bit over $6 million average annual value, so hopefully this is enough to convince Tramel. Oops, and evidently that was not structured evenly. Okay, so Tramel's going to sign for about $6.3 million average annual value. He's not a top-tier player, but that's a fine contract, especially considering that later on down the road he's not making hardly anything for a player who's a solid contributor. And uh, that's another thing I want to mention here. I really am a big... Uh, I'm big on signing super contracts for the really young high talent players which is the type of guys i'm working with a whole lot in my games but keep in mind that players like tramel are absolutely worth giving extensions to when they're young as well this is a player who's now going to be on a really affordable contract for a good amount of time for us and i just strongly recommend that you are constantly looking at your players looking at what you can give them always start with lower offers and work your way up to what they want uh, and overall yeah, I mean, just make sure that you have, you're keeping your finances low, that and not, you're making sure you've got financial flexibility. If you hit a roof on your paywall, you have players who could trade away to acquire more money. Everyone in your roster should always be tradable. If you have a player who's making more money than they're worth and they're not tradable, that's a problem. The only time that's ever acceptable is if you front load the heck out of a deal, like you're paying a guy 40 million a year, but the average annual value of the deal is 20 million, and it's just like year one or something. That's, I just do not recommend signing players to big contracts unless you are very confident they're going to be a top player and at the worst still tradable uh, before you get stuck with them. Another thing. Do not sign free agents to large budgets. Do not even sign free agents to what they are worth. The only time that you should be signing players off the free agent market is if they are cheap, undervalued guys. For example, you need a top tier or you need a shortstop. There's a top tier defensive shortstop with decent hitting, say an Andrelton Simmons type. He only wants $5 million a year. That's a perfectly reasonable free agent signing. But if you need a shortstop and there's a shortstop out there, excellent hitting, excellent fielding, he's 30 years old, but he wants a nine-year contract worth $30 million a year, don't sign him. Even if he is worth the money in year one, he could very well tank year two, and then you're stuck with a lot of money on a guy who's not that productive. You can't trade him away. He's not valuable. You're just stuck with him. Be spending that big money on your top young players. Don't be spending it on free agents unless those top free agents are just ridiculously cheap. I would generally recommend, like unless it's an international free agent who's a little bit younger, to not be spending more than 15 million even a year on a player. Uh, there are some exceptions, especially with shorter term contracts, like one, two, even three year deals sometimes, not including uh, team options, of course. It can be okay to spend a little bit higher average annual value on a player. But be very cautious about spending, especially on long-term contracts for free agents. It's just very risky, and that value can be much better had from prospects. Um, as for personnel, do not worry about these guys. Give them whatever they want, the best personnel, to sign with your team. They're not going to be a significant hit to your finances, and they are really worth it. Uh those are all the major things. Um, the big things I'm going to say are once you get a bigger market team, like I would say once you're able to pay an average of 15 million a starter, so that's a budget of around, oh, I think that's like a $250 million budget or so, then you want to start increasing your scouting budget to 24 million, which is the maximum. Uh, you want to make sure no matter what you always have your player development budget maxed uh that's going to be just so critical to developing your young players even keeping your older players the guys on your mlb roster quality talent uh keeping them effective the 36 million is just massive and do not have large contracts to players 
who are not genuinely among the best players in your league. Make sure you're only signing players to those contracts when they are either young or demanding a lot less than they're worth in free agency. And you should be able to manage your finances effectively and maneuver your way to World Series after World Series. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on the next one.